John, what, uh, as a result of your son being diagnosed with autism, you decided to dedicate your career to furthering the rights of those with disabilities in the education system in Kenya and abroad. Can you tell us what it's like for an individual with autism in Kenya, and what educational and therapeutic interventions are in place there? Uh, thank you. Um, to understand the context of education for a child with autism in Kenya, I think my personal story explains it all. Uh, my son, Joe Mark, uh, was born in uh, 2002. And uh, as he grew up, we started seeing some red flags. We didn't know why he was not speaking. We didn't know why he was not engaging in reciprocal relationships. He would not smile at us. Why he was crying a lot. And why he was having, uh, you know, tantrums. And um, this is because at that time in Kenya, very little was known about autism. And it took the intervention of a missionary doctor uh, who came to a mission station near where I was teaching. And when we became friends, I told him about my son. And he stayed with him for a day. And at the end of the day, he told me he has a condition called autism. So I asked him what autism was all about. He explained. He gave me materials. And the thing was, there was nobody, even in spite of the fact that now I knew what he was diagnosed with, who had knowledge and skills to help my son. So I went to many schools. I went to the capital city. But I didn't find a place where my son would get an education. My son was a little lucky because I was to learn our kids with autism are kept in dark places in my place, away from people, because people believe autism is as a result of a, is associated with a bad omen. So people have attitudes towards kids with autism. As our, our main speaker was uh, speaking and talking about people being chained, in this day and age, some kids with autism are chained, uh, you know, under trees because they are going to bolt and so forth. So in the Kenyan education system, uh, you find that even, even if a kid like my own son is uh, you know, diagnosed, they lack uh, you know, early intervention services. Most of them are not there. Other than that, you find that uh, even if they were to go to school, currently we have special uh, education units but they are grossly understaffed because we don't have enough teachers who can be able to teach these particular kids. One thing is, uh, even in the medical field, also not many people, and especially the time my son was growing up, that who knew why he was nonverbal. Actually, my own son was diagnosed as having a tongue tie, and he went through an operation, and I thought maybe he would speak. But that did not happen. Um, it was not until I learned about a school in Boston called Boston Igashi School. I read about it in the internet. I learned that they were employing internationally. And I applied to get there. And when I got there, I did my special ed. I learned more about autism. And Boston Igashi School gave me uh, or empowered me to work with the teachers who are working with my kids back in Kenya. Uh, it empowered me uh, to look at this disability from a different point of view. And I became the SLP for my son on Skype. I became the teacher on Skype. I became the communication person working with teams back home to make sure that my son uh, did well. So in short, I would like to say that uh, my belief was shaped by the words of our founder, the founder of Boston Igashi School, that in every child exists the most precious bird of self-identity. And searching it and fostering it with loving care is our work as educators. So every day I go to class, I take pride at even the little gains my kids make, one kid at a time. Thank you.
Thank you, John. Now, John, what needs to happen to change the negative viewpoints and get children with autism in school, in the workplace, and in the workplace in Kenya? And, and what is the current policy like in Kenya? So if I, I start with the current uh, policy framework, uh, Kenya has made uh, quite some progress in terms of ratifying international policy frameworks and also domesticating them under its, uh, to meet obligations under its own laws. And uh, it was in uh, the year 2003 that Kenya came up with a free uh, primary education policy. And this policy led to a huge influx of children who did not have access to schooling before to schools. Uh, we had uh, overclouded classrooms anyway, but it was good news that kids were getting to school. And I remember uh, President George Bush inviting our then president, Moi Kibaki, to come here and recognized his contribution uh, through the free primary education policy. But when this policy was enacted, later on in uh, 2007, we had the gender policy. And the reason was that whereas many kids were getting to school, it wasn't the case for most of the girls. So gender policy was meant to uh, address the issue of gender, uh, gender parity, making sure that we had more girls getting to school. Then we also uh, had the marginalized and uh, vulnerable children policy again in 2007, because whereas the policy, the 2003 policy, uh, led to lots of access to education, the marginalized kids, like those on the streets from the nomadic communities, kids with disability, were not accessing education. Therefore, this policy somehow, ha somehow helped to bring those kids uh, to school. Kenya uh, was a little ahead because they came up with their vision 2030 by the year 2008. And we had the social pillar, and under the social pillar, there was the education, uh, the education sector was addressed there with the aim of making Kenya's education uh, globally competitive. And inclusive education was seen as a viable vehicle to achieving that. Then uh, in 2010, Kenya promulgated its new constitution. And the constitution itself adopts a bold rights-based approach to education, which provides for free and compulsory basic education. That's from pre-primary, primary, and secondary level. However, despite the ambitious policy intent by the government of Kenya, a complex web of social, political, and economic issues uh, and other barriers tend to hinder, to hinder kids from accessing education but hope, uh, is a good start by the government and hope they can build upon that to improve the education of kids with autism. Thank you so much. I wish we had more time for additional questions. I have so many more for you. I just want to say that moderating this panel has been a tremendous honor and growth experience for me, and I feel inspired by each of you. Thank you. Thank you.